Hey, welcome to the pod. Second round of the playoffs. We got to make some predictions, boys. OKC and Dallas. I feel like every game, every matchup is crazy, but particularly in the West, it's going to be wild. OKC and Dallas. Dallas uh, took them six games to knock out the Clippers. OKC with the sweep of the Pels. We got a lot of superstar firepower in this one. Let's start off with Eeny, Meeny, Miny, Colton. Who do you think is going to win this series? Put me on the spot. I was wanting Riley to go first so I could piggyback. You off can defer, top. Riley. No, you... no, I can do it. I can. I'm a big defer delay. for the second. The I can do match. it. Uh, so, I mean, it's a great matchup. Uh, the Thunder took care of business, right? With the weakened Pelicans team, um, they didn't really look like a young team except for that first game in that series. Uh, you know, SGA. Who's gonna check SGA? Who's going to check Luca? Who's going to check Chet? I guess probably like Lively. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of matchup intrigue there. Uh, I Dort. Dort's going to be a menace, I think, on one of those guys on Dallas. Uh, I think this is going to go six or seven games. It's going to be really tight. I'm not going to bet against the Thunder again. I'm going to take the Thunder. I'm going to call it in seven. I agree that it's going to be a good long series. I think there's a good chance that it goes seven, but I think if it does go seven, OKC might be in a little bit of trouble because the experience bug is going to, is going to creep up. Um, I do think though, because I keep going back and forth on this one too. I do think that the size issue is going to be a big, a big story in this series. I don't think that Dallas has enough talented size to really? match up with OKC. I would have thought the other way around. Yeah, I, I honestly think that OKC has a little bit more height, a little bit more length, and more bounce as well. And I don't know that Dallas's bigger guys are going to be able to keep up with the youth there. So I, I see that being a big storyline here. But I still think that Dallas is going to get it done six or seven games. Um, going to be a fun one to watch. I, I, honestly, I think it's kind of a must win for Dallas. I think if Dallas gets bounced out of this round – that means that they're not built right and they're going to have to have some tough conversations this summer. I sort of feel like the size actually favors the Mavs with uh, Lively and Gafford and PJ Washington. It seems like outside of Chet, the Thunder don't really have another big. I mean, Jalen Williams tall. is like... They're all tall. All the way down their lineup, they're tall. A tall team. I mean, they're like six five, six six. They're probably not really going to be able to check if they have to. One of those three big guys for the Mavericks. So it should be interesting um, how the size. But that's what. That's I think one of OKC's only weaknesses really is that outside of Chet, they don't really have another like. 6'10 guy. I mean, 6'9, 6'10. I can't think of anyone even that tall other but than. But who's checking Chet? I mean, they have three guys that they could pretend to Gafford and Lively, that double headed monster. And then PJ, too, is. I mean, Dallas got a lot bigger with these trades that they made the trade deadline. They look humongous in the last round. They were very athletic and, and big. They Derek lost Jones. Maxi though. That's a big loss for them. Maxi was playing really yeah, well. Yeah, I was gonna mention that Kleba could play a big factor. Um, yeah, even but despite that, the size issue, I think that OKC they're just talent and the momentum that they have and home court advantage. I th I think I'm gonna have to go with the Thunder on this one in like a six or seven game series. But if Luca and Kyrie keep throwing those lobs. To those big dudes, I mean, Chet's going to have his work cut out for him. And then after that, they just they get real thin up front. It seems like the, those uh, smaller guys, the Dorts and the Jalen Williams, are going to have to be checking bigger guys. This should be interesting to see what happens there. But you mentioned Kleba. I think he, that is one of the things that swung me to OKC. Just He was such a a good shooter, such a good outlet for those guys that come in and hit five threes or whatever. And Dallas doesn't really have a ton of that outside of their two stars. Shout oh. out Derek Jones Jr. though, former Blazer. That dude has been 
playing the best basketball of his career, established himself as a real three and D guy, at least D. So uh, good on you, Derek Jones. Next matchup, big boy basketball, as Charles Barkley would say. Timberwolves, Nuggets. We already saw game one. Anthony Edwards looked like Michael Jordan out there, dropping 40-some-odd points. Jamal Murray, he has the calf issue. He's struggling a little bit with his shot. I'll take this one. I'll be the first one in on this one. I think Minnesota looks really good. I think whoever comes out of this series is going to win the championship if they're healthy. And I do think I just can't go against the champs. I think they'll respond at home tonight. I think they're good on the road. I'm still going to take the Nuggets. But, man, if Edwards averages 40 in this series, which could I feel like could easily happen, uh, then the Timberwolves are right there. It seems like crazy, crazy uh, series. It's going to be wild. Right? Yeah, I think I think that uh, Denver is going to come back with a vengeance. I think that they have the playoff pedigree. They are able to take that first impact and come back. Um, I think that, honestly, Minnesota is going to have to win two on the road in order to swing home court advantage because I think Denver definitely gets one in Minnesota. So Minnesota needs to win either game two tonight or game uh, I think game five two o going back home to Minnesota. That's going to be crazy. Yeah, I don't see that happening. I, I and I think yeah. So I think that I think that Denver is going to win the series. It's probably if it goes to seven games, then Denver is really going to have the advantage at home. Uh, or no, no, they're not. But um, yeah. So uh, I think that Denver is going to get it get it done probably in six or seven games. I. It's funny because I was thinking about picking Denver and I was going to be like, wow, you guys both picked Minnesota. Well, I think I just got swayed out of picking Denver. And here's why. Because you want to be the contrarian. Well, no, that's not true. <laughs> uh, the the Timberwolves have three bigs that are mobile enough to hang with Jokic. Jokic really, really saw a lot of stuff thrown at him. Like he rolled around uh you know cat out there which cat's playing well i gotta keep giving him shout outs every game he's been playing well uh and then he gets met at the rim by gobert or nas reed they can have two bigs in there har harassing Jokic. not a lot of teams have that luxury obviously edwards is a force you've got Jaden mcdaniels out there checking a hobbled jamal murray jamal murray isn't healthy i don't know outside of a michael porter jr explosion which they need that at this point they could get knocked off just off that fact alone. Even Jokic, you know, he in the press conference, ah, I can't remember the exact quote off the top of my head, but, you know, he's like, there's not two of me out there, right? Like, he's like, I need to clone myself. I need to clone myself. Yeah, well, Minnesota basically did that. They have three bigs that are all out there. The only thing that might keep Rudy Gobert off the court is the birth of his child, right? Like, he's not getting played off the court in the last series or in this series. So, True. so far. I'm going to take Minnesota, I guess. I think Minnesota is tough, and uh, I still think Boston is a serious threat to win it, whoever gets that far. But I would be, you know, shout out to Minnesota sports. They always, I feel like, are cursed. So I kind of have a soft spot for them. The Timberwolves have been bad since they've been in the league outside of a few Kevin Garnett years. So it'd be exciting for them and their fans to, to win. I shout will out. say – I will say that I think that this is probably the most vulnerable Denver's looked in a long time because of the Jamal Murray injury issues and because Minnesota looks so hot, but I just can't bet against Denver to figure it out. Yeah. Shout out. Go bear. I was, have been completely wrong. I've said multiple times that I just don't trust him in a playoff series. He looks like he can guard the littles a lot better. Now he moves his feet. He's actually like locked down on the perimeter. Uh, I'm curious to see how the rest of this series plays out, though. If Jokic can kind of outsmart him and pick up a few quick fouls on him, but they have so many big bodies, as you said, to throw at Jokic. I just I don't know how much uh, getting one or two of those guys in foul trouble is really going to matter all that much. Yeah, it's a crazy series. Two heavyweights going at it. The East. Let's go over to the East. We got the Boston Celtics against the Cleveland Cavaliers. As I said last time, 
I think this is uh this conference is Boston's to win. I just don't really think that they I mean if they don't get out of the East, it's gonna be a uh collapse from Boston. I think they'll probably lose their coach and some other stuff will happen. Obviously Porzingis is banged up. That's something to definitely look out for. Uh Cleveland looked pretty good in game seven. Donovan Mitchell's been going off as he usually does. But uh yeah, I mean, I'm going with the 64-win team. I'm going with the Celtics on this one. This is why they got Drew Holiday. The Cavaliers having a, a, a you know, a lights-out opposing guard, and the Celtics have an ace defender to match up with them, you know? Um, so I think that that's a major uh, win for the, for the Celtics. Uh, Porzingis being out does hurt them. Um, you know, he would be a good threat to kind of stretch – Mobley out of the paint because Mobley is a great rim defender in there. Um, and I definitely think Jason Tatum needs to pick it up, but I guess if Derek white just takes over and suddenly is the best player on the Celtics, none of this really matters because you know, they just have yet another guy who's suddenly a star. Uh, Cause that's how he's played. You know, he's been like the second leading scorer on the team, barely, barely. And he's shooting very efficiently. So I'm going to take the Celtics I'm going to say it's going to be five, maybe six. Uh, I Cleveland took seven games to beat Orlando. I, the Celtics aren't going to play around, you know, and they're going to be rested. Boston is very much not Orlando, and Boston looks like really a, a difficult team to beat, especially on their home floor uh, through these the last few games. So, yeah, I don't think that there's any chance. Um, that Cleveland's going to even make it into a series. You know, there's like 15, what, like uh, 16 more wins this season. They're like a 12-point favorite, you know, in the first game. I think it might be kind of a beat down. Um, I do think that the Porzingis storyline is going to be an important one if he's if for this next round as we go into the Eastern Conference Finals. That could end up being a big issue there. Um, but I think for this round, they're going to be just fine and win it in f- probably five. I actually thought Orlando would be a better matchup for the Celtics just because they their length and their defenders they might be able to kind of suffocate the uh Celtics with the Cavs they kind of tend to get in shootouts with teams and that's exactly what Boston wants to do is chuck up a lot of threes so I think it's kind of a bad matchup for the Cavs too but if Porzingis is hurt um yeah, the next two rounds are going to be rough for the Celtics. I just don't think they would have enough size to really contend with anybody coming out of the West. And particularly if Indiana won, they would have a lot, a huge size advantage on the Celtics too. Moving to that series, Pacers and Knicks. They're at halftime of game one right now. I think Hartenstein just hit a three from like half court as they went into the locker rooms. But I'm going to defer to uh let's defer to riley because this one i have gone back and forth on i'd like to hear you guys's takes first (laughs) this is this is the more interesting series in the east for sure and probably the one i'm looking forward to second most after that uh heavyweight denver minnesota series in the west it's very interesting because these are a couple of teams that have you know not really been in the in the mix for years and here they are looking like teams that that could you know challenge boston especially if they have injury problems um i think either one of them could be a good matchup for boston but uh you know i we talked about this kirby you and i talked about this it's like one team has the best player and one team maybe has the best talent overall and i think come playoff time i think new york's gonna get it done it's going to be a good series. I think it's going to be a long series, but I'm calling New York. Well, I just want to mention one thing because we kind of have brushed over it. The playoffs all of a sudden are a young man's game this year. How weird is it to not have LeBron, Steph, you know, Dame, Giannis, like all those old stars are gone out. All these teams left are young teams except Denver. They're established, right? Boston, Still pretty young, you know, they're yeah, not, they're, they're they young, but they Jokic, don't have like a lot of guys over 30. But Jokic is like a three time MVP. You know, they've won, right? But all the other like old guard winners are all out. So it's kind of like if anyone wins except, you know, if 
Denver loses, anyone else is kind of that new champion. It's kind of a crazy time to be a fan of the NBA. All the new young players are coming in. Wemby's coming next year. That's going to be crazy. But um, as far as this goes, it's interesting. The You think of the old guard for the Pacers and the, the Knicks is actually Reggie Miller. That's like the first thing you think of when you think of this these two teams playing together. That's how long it's been since it feels like they've been like in the limelight. I, I know Indiana had Paul George there for a while, but – Going forward to this series, I think that it's going to be up and down. It's going to be, you know, one team's that offensive force, one team's the defensive force. I have to go the Knicks only because they have home court. I think it's that close. There's not really a standout. I think, you know, Brunson's probably the best player in the series. Halliburton can get up to the peaks of Brunson, you know, occasionally when he's diming it, right? It's going to be fun, but I don't know. I think defense will win in the end, and I think that I can't vote against my guy Josh Hart at this stage because he's a he's an animal in there. Part of the city. Yeah, I've uh, gone back and forth between, like, I feel like each team has very distinct advantages. Like, the Pacers, I feel like they have a little bit more size. They're less injured right now. They have Siakam, and the Knicks don't have Randall. Um I think that's a benefit for New York. <laughs> Mendel be. always craps the bed in the playoffs. He is horrible. He's always, you know, two of 14, and seven rebounds in the eight. It's time. true. It sort of seems like just using Brunson like every play might be their best move, which is why this is a little off topic, but I think it would be kind of dumb for New York to go out and get like another ball dominant guard, like a uh, Doncic or uh, all these people, all these that's what I meant, not Doncic. I meant Donovan Mitchell, my bad. Um, but, yeah, uh, Stephen A keeps calling for, you know, Devin Booker, all these guys that go to New York. It's like, I think you surround Brunson with just more size, more 3 and D players, and let him just keep cook, going for 40 and 10 or whatever, because clearly no team has really figured out how to stop that. He's a monster. I think – he could be the reason that uh, New York wins this series. I mean, if they win the series, he'll be the reason. But I think that he might be the thing that pushes them over the top. His just offensive skill is ridiculous. I trust him maybe a little bit more than Halliburton, who sort of needs the rest of his team to be cooking too to really be playing his most effective game. Um, so, yeah, I've got the Knicks, but I could see it going either way. Can we give a quick shout out to TJ McConnell for the way that he was playing That's in that the, last, the last game and so far in this game too. Yeah. The, the Indiana bench is kind of their shining star right now. Yeah. And he looks like unstoppable. He took that game over. And I mean, if he can continue to give them that kind of production, they get a lot scarier. Um, but I, I have to imagine New York will figure that out at some point. Do we want to play gone fishing with a few teams? Just quickly mention a few teams that got knocked out. The one that uh, came to mind first was the Los Angeles Clippers. Is it time for them to blow it up? I heard today that they want to keep those three stars, particularly Paul George and Harden. Just have they ever performed in the playoffs? It's uh, they're 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 all hit and miss, like. Sometimes they'll play well, and sometimes they'll play god awful playoff p. It's know? always when they they matter the most. It's like games three and four they'll play amazing, but games six and seven Harden won't you won't even hear his name. It's crazy. I just don't feel like that team really has an alpha. I feel like they don't really have like a go to guy necessarily. They're a little confused on who's what should be playing each role. Um. I almost feel like they should just trade all of them and just completely blow it up and get, they would be able to get a lot of picks and young prospects for those three guys. Most likely Maybe. you don't think so. Hurt. Well, Paul George is a free agent. He's going into unrestricted free agency and the other ones they're hurt and Harden. You're not going to get much for Harden at this point. He destroys every team he's on Westbrook's a shell. Like I don't think you're going to get a lot for any of them. I think they're screwed. Actually. I think they're, along with Phoenix, basically the team that has the darkest future. Because you go back and look at the Paul George trade, what all they gave away, it's why the Thunder are swimming in picks. I think the Clippers are effed, for lack of a better <laughs> term. So 
That's my opinion. Like we'll see what they do, but they're 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 screwed. It's crazy how bad, how just predictably bad, particularly Harden and Westbrook are. <laughs> like they just Westbrook is just horrendous with his shooting. It's like it's just so bad. I can't believe that. I keep expecting some of it, some new fold, some new wrinkle, and one of their game, one of their two games where they kind of push it over the top. But it's just the same thing every year. It's it's the same thing every year with all of them, with everybody on that team. It's just the same same problems year after year. It's no better with Kawhi. I mean, like, it's not totally his fault, you know, because and so like you have a little bit more sympathy for it. And like, I don't dislike Kawhi as a player. Like I dislike James Harden as a player. Like I don't like watching him play basketball when Kawhi is healthy and playing. He's a joy to watch, but that just doesn't happen. You know, he's had two legitimate playoff runs. And when he's in a playoff series throughout, I mean, he's a championship player, but that just doesn't happen ever anymore, you know, and it's only ever happened a couple of times. So yeah, it's not, it, it doesn't look good for LA. I don't see any benefit of keeping any of those guys. I don't know. I can't see why they would want to run back another season with Kawhi, PG, Russell Westbrook, who, as we all know, is the subtraction by addition player or James Harden. I, I, and I don't know what you can get for any of them, but I feel like honestly, you just got to ship them out. And even if you're just tanking for five years and trying to rebuild, I don't have picks. Well, that, that's what I mean. So you have to start tanking now. You have to just let them go, be the worst team in the league next year, and start building because they got nothing right now. Yeah, maybe it's not. Yeah, maybe it's not in their best interest to blow it up right now because they don't have control over their picks right now. Oh, man. Yeah, they, it might just be worth it for them to be mediocre, you know, or this for the next few years. Anybody, uh, any other team standing out to you guys? You got anything to talk about? Bucks, Lakers. I was just gonna say, really quick, just quick. Are the Bucks next year? What What do we give me? Like a thirty second summary of where you think they'll be next year, both of you. What are they gonna do? I mean, if they're healthy, they'll be a contender. I think. Dame and Giannis, if both of those guys are on the floor when it matters most, I think they'll be. A contender. I don't know if they'll be favored, but I I gotta say that they would have a chance at least. They need more help. I would probably try to maybe think about trading like Lopez and Portis and those guys and kind of refreshing their supporting cast. We've talked a little bit on this podcast about how we're worried for Giannis that the injury bug might catch up with him and become a recurring problem. Um, it seems to be kind of trending that way, the way that his body's built, the way that he uses his body and just the importance of him being at full health to be able to do anything. Like he doesn't have much of a jump shot. He can't try, he can't kind of say, stay out on the perimeter and spread the D the offense and the defense and try to, you know, affect the game that way. He has to be full speed. He has to be fear the deer. And if he's not healthy, they're in trouble. And Dame and Middleton and Portis, they aren't going to get it done. And Dame's not getting any younger either. And if he keeps trying to shoulder too much of the load, like he has had to this year through spurts to where he ends up hurting himself. And they have Glenn Rivers as their coach. That's just like the bottom line problem for that team is that they really put themselves in a tough spot by get by having all these coaching problems and then bringing in, you know, the uh, subtraction by addition head coach. So I think they're kind should've, of in trouble next year too. Should have kept Coach Bud, I'm telling you. Probably. Shouldn't have picked up Beverly because he throws I, basketballs at fans' oh faces. Oh, God, and, dude. I know, will say – Go ahead. I was just going to say, I will say shout out Chris Middleton. He looked the healthiest he has since they won the championship. He also looked like he hasn't lost a step since they won a championship. He had a fantastic series, and I think that they should probably try to keep him if they can and if he can, you know, if he can return to anything, any form that he was at. Him with Damon Giannis is a problem. That roster is aging rapidly. I think they're the oldest team in the league. Oh, gee whiz, what a terrible position to have 
their picks in a couple of years when they're all in a retirement home. <laughs> oh, yeah, those uh those couple teams that Blazers have the some pick leverage over. It's gonna be fun to watch them struggle. Do we have any of Phoenix's picks? We didn't. They didn't get any of those. It was just like maybe some seconds. I can't remember. Yeah. It's mostly uh Milwaukee's. Yeah, it's all the pick swaps and those sorts of things. Any other teams standing out to you guys? Anything coming to mind? I don't Lakers. know. I mean, I don't know. Riley, you want you want the Blazers to draft Bronny to just uh, troll yeah, the Lakers? Just to troll them, just to mess with them. Let's do it with our. Even if we get the like number two pick, let's just take Bronny. Uh, uh, just to, just to mess with LeBron. You also, know? apparently also, the Lakers are willing to take him, but we can throw a wrench in that. that also, Orlando needs to uh, trade for Anthony Simons. Toronto, you need an instant offense guard. You have too much length and too much size. You need to trade some of that away to the neighborhood Portland Trailblazers. Yeah, that probably is all I can really think of. The, most of those teams that yeah, I mean, I don't know what the what the Lakers' future is going to look like. I think that they're in kind of a similar position to some of the other teams we've been talking about, where they've got all their salary sank into guys that are getting older and not, in some cases, injury problems. In some cases, they just can't get it done. Um, trying to, you know, shuffle off the blame onto a coach like that had anything to do Why with it. Why fire Darvin Ham? That was you expect so. I've been waiting for Darvin Ham to get fired since they announced that he was going to be the new coach. I knew that wasn't going to work. You could just tell from the first press conference that that wasn't a personality that was going to be able to control LeBron James. But what, I mean, (laughs) what do people think the coach has anything to do with the way that LeBron James and Anthony Davis play basketball? They're going to go out there and they're going to play the way that they play. They're barely listening to their coach. Maybe some of the younger guys, maybe they need someone who can develop. I I don't know. But the idea that coaching has anything to do with LeBron and AD failing to perform in the playoffs is laughable. I don't think it has much to do with LeBron and AD. I think it has to do with D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves. It's the supporting cast they have around those two guys. Those two guys are still very good and like probably could win if they had a a supporting cast but they just have nothing surrounding those guys and very little um like future prospect in any of those guys like i don't see any one of any of those guys improving much they're they're gonna kind of be the role players that they are already and there's just nothing there for the lakers if any sort of help behind those guys and that's not Darvin Ham's fault. He inherited this team as it was constructed. That's obviously the GM's fault for not picking the right guys, for trading a bunch of their prospects for Russell Westbrook a few years ago. I was just going to say, if only they still had someone like Contavious Caldwell Pope, Kuzma, that might have helped him out a little bit. Yeah, they made, they made a few poor moves after the Anthony Davis trade, and that's where yeah, I think... It's... Like, do you think J.J. Reddick's going to be able to get D'Angelo Russell to make wide-open threes? D'Angelo's yeah. gone. What kind of what some, does it some other do team will that? fall into the trap of thinking he's going to be like Nets D'Angelo Russell, and it's <laughs> not going to happen. It's going to be like Orlando. We're going to have an Anthony Simons out there on a platform, and they're like, "Nah, we trust D'Angelo Russell and Clay Thompson actually," <laughs> and uh, so they'll sign Clay Thompson to a max and <laughs> trade for D'Angelo Russell. Uh, you know, so things like that, things to help the Lakers somehow. The Lakers get out of any kind of situation they're in. It just success just falls onto them backwards if it needs to happen like that. So that has not been the case lately, though. I mean, I guess they did win a championship like four years ago, but it's been it's been kind of a struggle for them to get really any help for those two guys the last couple of years. All right. I think that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.